Hi everyone! In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you four different methods of how to overlap content in Elementor. More precisely, how to overlap image and the text. You ain't gonna need the pro version of Elementor, even though it's awesome idea to have a copy. The only extra plugin that I'm gonna use is Steroids for Elementor and which is completely free. Before I start, there's one thing that everyone needs to be clear with. Using the image widget and the negative margin trick is completely wrong and none of the four methods is proclaiming that kind of a workaround. Why do I think it's wrong? Well, unless the image can be made full height, the amount of content will sooner or later get bigger, it'll overgrow the image. We are working in a responsive environment inside of which the image element is responsive horizontally, while at the same time the content expands in the opposite direction. So that's the reason. The simplest method includes only one column and only one widget. To be more precise, that kind of a simple overlap can be done by using the image box widget only. That's why I'm going to drag and drop the image box to my column and then quickly adjust everything. The image itself should be 100% wide, even though that's going to be only 50% in reality. It's because the image box widget container is a flex box and the sizing inside the flex box is dictated by the flex element itself. Just to mention that I'm going to use the inbox that I'm using, the inbox extension, in order to set the background color of the text box. And I'm using it to change padding and margins, and also modify margins of the title and description text. I'm setting up margins to these two elements directly, rather than the wrapping element, in order to avoid the flex element sizing problem. What is Inbox? Well, Inbox is one of many other useful extensions that belong to the Steroids for Elementor plugin or add-on. So, now that I have everything ready, how to actually make these two overlap? Well, here's a checkmate in two steps. Step one, make the image stretch full height. You can find that option under the image panel settings. It also belongs to the Inbox extension. And the step two, I'm going to add some negative spacing to the image itself, negative margin. So I'm going to use minus 60 pixels. And there it is, my first overlapping example. Of course, I just have to make a few adjustments in order to make it look better on mobile devices. If you ask about the usability of that kind of a setup, well, if you really need something basic and simple where the title and descriptions are, description are about enough, you'll be okay with the image box only. But in case more complex content box is needed, you'll have to use a different approach that I'm also about to present in this tutorial very soon. Another simple method or the setup is by using the intersection widget and the pseudo extension of the column. So I'm going to duplicate the first example and then delete the image box widget. Instead of the image box, I'll use the intersection widget. And I'm going to use it for only one reason. I have to be able to add different widgets at will and of course wrap them up in a single container that I can set the background to. My intersection is going to be 50% wide and I'm going to use the Breaking Bad extension to change the width. I will also remove that extra column because only one single column shall be enough. I'm going to add a few basic widgets to the intersection now, like heading, text and the button, and then the background, paddings, margins, whatever is needed to make it look nice. Now the right hand side image. First I'm going to highlight the top column for edit. After that I'll go to the advanced tab and expand the pseudo extension panel. That very addition to elementor columns can be used to add two pseudo elements to the column itself, before and after. And in general, it doesn't really matter which one I'm about to deploy now because both of them can be considered as, as, as an extra layer, okay? So I'll simply assign the image from the media library to the before pseudo element and I'm going to adjust position, repeatment and the size of the image itself, followed by the position and size of the pseudo element in relation to its parent element, which is the color. And finally, the two steps checkmate. Step one, I'm gonna add the additional 60 pixels on top 
of the 50% width because I'm about to tuck these 60 pixels under the text box or the intersection widget to be more precise. That's why I have to move the pseudo element 60 pixels to the left hand side as well. In step two, I'm gonna add 60 pixels to top and the bottom of my intersection widget. It doesn't have to be 60 pixels strictly, you can add as many pixels as needed, of course. Alrighty, my second overlapping example done. The most likely, it doesn't look ready yet for the mobile devices, but it's definitely something that can be managed easy way. Let's see. I have to make the intersection widget 100% wide, that's for sure. Another fix goes to the top and bottom margins, so I'm gonna leave much more space above the intersection because this is the gap reserved for the image. So something like 300 pixels should be okay. And then the pseudo element no longer has to be 100% tall, but rather have some fixed height, let's say 360 pixels. With this overlapping example, you are no longer limited to use the title and description text only, but rather compose more complex content box. In case you have any questions, always feel free to post the comment. The third method shall be the mix between the first and the second one. And I'm gonna put it up in less than a minute because I'm about to combine a little bit of everything from the existing two examples. So, first I'll duplicate the very first example. After that, I'll remove the image from the image box. With the image box widget highlighted, I'll go to the advanced tab, expand positioning panel and choose the custom width, which allows me to reduce the width of the widget to 50%. Now I'm gonna right mouse click on a second example top column in order to copy the styles of that column and then simply paste the style to my top column. Okay, what did I do exactly? Well, I have actually replicated all the styles of the target column, including the pseudo element properties and settings. Okay, at the end, let's adjust everything for the mobile devices. You might say that this method is like a step back from the previous one, or that it doesn't make any difference, but I wouldn't agree upon something like that. Why exactly? Well. It's simply because this method allows much more control over the image size, position and style in general. The first method does not allow any and the image is displayed fully scaled. As you can see, of course. Anyhow, let's do the final one. The fourth and the final method involves two columns and by me is the most advanced one. I'm going to start with the one column section. And then, in order to save some time, I'm gonna copy paste the entire column from the example number two. So I'll just right mouse click on a column of the intersection widget and I'll choose copy. After that, I'll do the right mouse click on a column of my new section and simply paste. Next, let's add the background to the right hand side column. So highlight the column for edit, hit the style tab, Enable the classic background in order to activate the hidden background overlay panel Which for some reason is kept hidden in Elementor until the normal background is activated Now I'm gonna pick the photo from the media library and set it up If you wonder why the background image is still not vis visible in a column You need to know that if the column is empty without any widgets the background overlay is not to be rendered and if you wonder why I'm not using the normal background, but rather the background overlay, you're gonna figure it out in just a minute. So in order to make the background visible, I'll simply drag and drop the spacer widget to my empty column, and I'm gonna make it 300 pixels tall. These 300 pixels are going, are going to keep the column itself that tall when the both columns collapse for the mobile device's viewport size. And finally, the two steps checkmate. Step one, add the top and the bottom margin to the text column. It's gonna be 60 pixels as usually, but you can use as much as you want. I already said that, it doesn't matter. Step two, make the background overlay 60 pixels wider. And in the same time, 
move it left for 60 pixels in order to tuck the image under the text column. As you can see, I'm using another extension named Overlays, which can turn that so much neglected element into something extremely useful. Just like all other extensions used in this tutorial, this one also belongs to Steroids for Elementor add-on or plugin. At the end, if you got some stacking or problems, just set the background all the way behind everything else by using the negative Z margin. Let's see how everything works in responsive mode. Okay, just a few minor adjustments are needed as I can tell. The first one is to definitely remove the top and the bottom margin of the text column and add some left and right hand side margins instead, just a little bit. I also have to reposition the background overlay because it no longer needs to be tucked under the text column sidewise but rather bottom wise. That's why I'm also going to add additional 60 pixels to those 300 pixels which are held by the spacer widget itself. Now, how do I change the order of columns? Well, you can use Elementor's responsive panel, which provides extremely primitive, I have to say it, extremely primitive way of handling the columns order. Why primitive? Well, what if you had three columns instead of two and you want to place the middle one atop of all others? How do you do that? Well, it doesn't make any sense, right? So I'd rather use the Breaking Bad extension which allows me to precisely set the column order by assigning the corresponding number to the target column. And that's pretty much it. I hope I was able to teach you something new. I hope that I fulfilled your expectations and above everything else, sharpen up your elementor skills. Please visit my Gumroad shop and find something for yourself because this is how you can help me continue working on steroids for elementor add-on and of course, keep this channel alive. If you plan to buy Elementor Pro for yourself or the client, please use my own affiliate link from this video description. This is how you help me earn some money from Elementor too, and in the same time, it won't cost you any dime. Other than that, stay well, peace and love.